Hey, what's going on, my friends? How are you? So I got the bike uh, packed up, ready to go. Got all my gear in the tour pack and got my walking stick strapped to the side of the bike. And this is where we're headed, South Stoddard. Uh, it's an area that I passed by here. I'm um, traveling this Route 9, spotted a lot of tree breaks, side of the road and stuff. And I noticed this pull-off area, and right on the side of the road, there is a sign, little sign brown, with two hikers on it. And I said, oh, i got to check that out. Pulled in there, checked it out, said, I'm coming back to this spot. Today is the day. Okay, so this is something I keep passing, uh, and I've been meaning to stop here. I am not where I said I was going, but I wanted to stop and, and show this. Uh, there's a bridge over here. No mortar. Uh, it's just the architecture keeps the bridge up. Let's check it out. Also, I just may be forced to take a hike into the woods here. But I keep, uh, I keep driving by this spot and I keep thinking, oh, I want to stop here and check that out. And Let me get a better look at it here. One second. It really is quite beautiful. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I mean, there is just no lack of beauty up here in New Hampshire, I must say. But I want to check. I just want to poke around up here just a tiny bit. Let's go for a little walk. Let me, uh, let me secure the bike because sometimes these little walks I go on ended up being, they end up being not so little. So I'm gonna uh, set the alarm on this bad Larry. Seem to have a little trail here. So let's investigate. This was a little bit of a whim actually today being Sunday, I've been all out at work, a lot of hours, I'm tired, I worked yesterday as well as all week, so I was going to take today and just relax, and I did, I relaxed for a little while and I said, you know what, I want to go for a ride and I want to go for a hike. Wow, it's beautiful, huh? Hey, if I didn't ask, how are you? Just in case I forgot, I hope everyone's doing well. Oh, that's pretty. Gotta love New Hampshire. Oh, I do, that's for sure. I guess you don't have to, but I absolutely love it here. Why do I look like I saw a sign in the woods here when I was just walking down this trail? There's something about, let me tell you, about the forest here in New Hampshire. It's dark. It's dark. It's thick. Uh, thick, thick canopy. And it's funny, I'll be driving the roads up here and I'm almost driving off the road half the time because I'm looking into the woods and I'm just in awe of the thickness. Just how dense and, and how much forest is, is up here is ridiculous. I hear people over by my motorcycle. Don't touch my holly, you bastards. So, what does this say here? Harris Center for Conservation Education. Ah, this land is owned by somebody blah blah blah. State of New Hampshire Conservation Easement maintained on private property. What does that mean? It doesn't say no trespassing. That's an uphill climb if I ever saw one, and we're going to go for a walk. I think my best bet for now is to stick to the river, and I'm going to do that. Uh, it's just a new area for me. I don't have a map or anything like that. And I'm just checking things out. Um, I still might take a ride to that spot I pointed to on the map. I can't believe how thick 
the forest is. I know that I keep saying that, but my God, it's amazing. This does appear to be somewhat of a trail here that I'm on. A huh, little fishkin hole. I'll be doing a thorough tick check when I get home. Where's all the birds at? How come there's no sounds but the passing vehicles? Get all them bugs on the water, huh? Good. Stay there. See if we got any any animal animals coming to the watering hole. And tracks. Small dog, maybe coyote. I'm thinking probably a small dog. Somebody came down here and had a little time. Uh, this is a little convenient that this trail has already been blazed by other peoples. Oh, this trail looks like it's dead. It just died out. Oh, maybe not, but that is Tick City. Oh, man, do I hate me some ticks. Let's see if maybe I can navigate around this, this stone here. I've been watching um, a lot of videos. I, I, and, of course, I do all the time. Uh, Sasquatch videos. And, you know, some of them... They're really interesting. Uh, you know, believable even. And then and then, you know, I'll I'll see a few of those in a row. I'm like, oh man, that's that's awesome, you know. Such great, great footage of the sounds. And then I'll see another one, and I'm like, oh, well, that right there is why people laugh at us. Um, you know. Watch some of like Bigfoot Tony stuff. He'll break down these absolute jokers out there that are trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes uh, for a couple of bucks. You know, and, and <clears throat> there's no money to be made doing this. If there is, I don't know of it. Um, I've had um, people contribute to my channel. I've got my new boots because of it. Um, you know, gas, uh, another backpack, walking stick, got a couple new walking sticks. Whoa, that didn't help me there, did it? Um, you know, th this, there's no money. It's, and it's funny, my channel is monetized. And, and, and I continue to monetize my videos. I have yet to see a dime from YouTube. Nothing. They owe me over $1,000. Anybody out there in YouTube land can help me figure out why I'm not getting paid. I would love to know. There's got to be a reason. There's something I did, some kind of code, maybe that YouTube had sent me that I never found it and I'm supposed to verify something. Now I have a new address. I'm like, I wouldn't mind getting that money, you know? I wouldn't mind using that for gas and, and a couple of beers and, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I said beers. Just some down trees, right? Certainly what it looks like. Just a couple of twigs. <sighs> I seem to... Uh, I, I, I have this issue with, with YouTube, you know, and I'm like, hey, someday, you know, someday maybe I'll get that money. 
And I think it's funny that some people think that some YouTubers out there are, or researchers are making all, the, all kinds of money from YouTube. And you know what? Maybe they are. <clears throat> Maybe they are because they just have so many, <clears throat> pardon me, they have so many people watching their videos and they're just that popular and, and, and they're, they're doing all right. They're, they're making a, a living out of it. Well, that's all well and good, but I, it kind of makes you question, oh, kind of makes you question the motives. Um, you know, are they making these videos just to make money? Ah, there we go. Gotcha. That's quite a, that's a break right there. Let's go, let's go look at that. Let me, let me navigate over there. Okay, that's, uh, that's about six feet up. Right about my height, six foot tall break. I'm trying to determine maybe if it's this year, last year, old years ago. I see some yellow. Possibly could have, could have, uh, could not be all that old. And then I know I make some people nauseous and I keep saying it all the time. My theory, my opinion, this could be a snow load break. But, so, we're pointing, this break is pointing in this direction. I think what I'm going to do is follow this opposite. So, I'm going to turn into the forest, and I'm going to go for a walk. And I want to see if I run into another tree break. And that has been my motus operandi for a long time. That's how I kind of have stumbled across structures and things like that, by following some of the directions of these tree breaks. And um, I am walking into cobwebs like you read about. So I know nothing big has come through this area recently. At least nothing my height. It's not easy going through this spot here. I think I got my, I think I've got my shoelace untied, so. Let me fix that. So I just put my camera down to tie my shoe. And I heard a whistle, a loud whistle from up, up top here, w w above me, like maybe a hundred yards. I, I just, uh, a really loud, it almost sounded like when you put your fingers together, I can't do that whistle. But when you put your fingers in your mouth and you make that, that loud whistle, that's what exactly what it sounded like. And that is possibly what it could have been. But it, uh, I'm looking at my camera as I'm tying my shoe, going, you're kidding me. The second I drop my key, put shut the camera off. I still have the road behind me in the river. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up here a little bit further, not much. I want to check out that spot where I pointed to on the map in um, East Stoddard, I think is the name of it. And it's a, it's a hiking trail. Um, and it's one of those, one of those trails that takes days to hike it. Uh, it just goes through all, all different parts of New Hampshire. And I'll show you uh, a picture of the map when I get there. That whistle sounded really close though. There's no trails here. So this, this is what, confuses me but i'm gonna leave this alone because i didn't get it on video uh, on audio so it is what it is so i'm, I'm gonna hightail it out of here i want to go to that spot i'm a little bit <laughs> little freaked out at the whistle i i didn't go far now, I, this is something that i'm standing here thinking to myself right i'm gonna head back to the river and back to the vehicle. There is not a chance, I think, that I could have pulled off this Route 9, come check out that bridge, right? Decide to step into the woods, grab my gear, walk into the woods for 10 to 15 minutes, because that's probably as long as I've been walking, maybe 20 along this river, and there's a Sasquatch gonna whistle at me up the hill, just like that all of the area in New Hampshire, right? I pull over into this lot and Bigfoot whistles at me. 
I don't know, guys, about that. Um, although, who's up there? I'm going to Google Earth this spot. Uh, it's a landmark on Route 9. I'm not positive what town I'm in, but I'm not far from Antrim. It possibly could even be Antrim. Get that spooked out feeling, and I feel like a dope. Um, you know, but th this wasn't even my original area. Watch my back while you're making sure nobody's here. This isn't even my original area that I planned on hiking today. So, I'm going to make my way back to the river. Back to my bike. What the heck whistled up there? I don't know. It seems awfully freaking convenient though, doesn't it? That just the, I haven't made a video in a week. I make a video, come out here for 15, 20 minutes, and bam, I get whistled at. Anyways. Let's head to East Stoddard. All right, so I might be in Munsonville. <laughs> I'm not positive exactly where I'm at. I just know this is Route 9, and I don't know if it's Munsonville or there's a map here. Let's see if the map tells me where I'm at. There's a state facility right here. I don't know if that's where they keep um, the salts or whatever for the roads, but... There's another car here, so somebody's in here hiking. Uh, let's see what we see. I want to show you guys at least, right? This is the Monadnock Sunapee Greenway Trail, says the sign. So, you are here. Love when they do that. Okay. Um... Granite Lake. <laughs> I'm not positive where I am, guys, but uh, anywho, this is quite a quite a trail. It goes. Uh, let me not bore you guys with this. It's a good trail, uh, as far as the size, uh, the distance of it. Okay, so I read this a little bit. It's 48 miles long. I am going nowhere near that today. I just want to take a little, I'm going to take a little jaunt up this way, up and around this little lake here. And I want to see where this goes. So that's my plan. And I'm taking you guys with me. So I was here, drove by this spot a couple of times and I kept looking down and seeing that facility and thinking, uh, there's no trail there. How am I supposed to? Finally, I bit the bullet and pulled in here. And I seen this trail right here. And I took a, a, I don't know, I just went up to the top of the hill. And I was looking off to my left and to my right for a sign, Sasquatch sign. And if I'm not mistaken, up here somewhere, um, I saw something that looked suspect right here. Just the way those branches are leaned all like that. It could be nothing, could be something. And as subtle as that may seem to people, sometimes when you see something, you know, if you're out there hiking, walking in the woods, you keep your eye out for that kind of thing. This is all uphill. I could days out of shape. So even more reason to get back into getting some miles under my boots. Well, I certainly hope it ain't uphill the whole way. That would be, uh, that'd be just cruel. I don't believe I've ever seen a break like that before. Maybe that's what a natural snow load break looks like, huh? That's uh, that's all. I've never seen a break like that. Yeah, uh, that's something. Uh, if you happen to hear there's some rattling from my backpack, that's ice I have in a Stanley mug. It stays nice and cold. I was having a problem hiking up here, which is so hot. I hate drinking warm water. 
you know, it's, it's terrible. And so I finally picked up, uh, I didn't pick it up, I owned it for a long time, and I just never thought of using it. And in the move, I uh, rediscovered it, fill it with ice, and it lasts all day long. Right now there's iced tea in it, and it's nice and frosty, frosty cold. What do we got? A little plaque up here. I see something leaned against a tree. Let's see what that says. Welcome. The Monadnock Sunapee Greenway. All right, it's a map. I see. All right, this trail splits here. It goes off straight. And then, or I could go in, in the opposite direction and go that way, is what I, I'm assuming. So, let's keep that in mind on the way back, huh? Let's not, uh, let's not confuse ourselves. Let me get back, I'm sure. Oh, what do we got? MS Trail, Center Pond, Stoddard. That's behind me. And then, Nelson Village. That's ahead of me. That's where I'm going, I guess. Nelson Village. I hope you're ready. Hiker Dave's coming. Bust out some ice cold beers and a cup of fireball snifters. We'll sit down and we'll talk Sam Squamch. <laughs> That is a fresh break. Fairly fresh. You can even see it's still moist from the sappage. Huh. That, it looks really fresh. Let's take a look at the other side here. Yeah, that looks fresh to me. Right on the trail though, so that's always suspect. You know, I mean, I can't stress that enough, M mostly for people too new to my channel. I'm not saying that every break I'm walking by here is, is Sasquatch, and if it's along the trail, then it's, then it's obvious that it could have been done by a person. But I, I keep that in mind, is really all I'm saying. That in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, you know, I mean, how simple is it to jump up and grab that tree? It's only a couple inches thick dangle off of it and just snap it right but you know when i see these patterns especially in mass when i first started doing this this exploration i just don't think everybody's hanging off of saplings and breaking them that's i just can't see that being the case and that and that's why i see it so often that you just there's, there's what, thousands of people running around snapping saplings or trees that wasn't even a, a, a sap that wasn't even a pine i don't know what kind of tree it was but i know it wasn't a pine tree let me rephrase that i'm guessing that that wasn't a pine tree because there's some smart people out there that watch these videos and maybe i'll be corrected and they can tell just by looking at it what kind of tree it was i want to know why it's so quiet again here i notice i'm noticing that uh, the last place I was at, in the beginning of the video, quiet as well. Okay, this is really subtle. Just that little snap. I mean, honestly, guys, just that. It, it makes me wonder. Um, would, would someone just walking down the trail just grab that tree and just break it? And just say, oh, you know, that'd be cool just to break the tree. Uh... Or, or somebody could be joking and doing that, saying, hey, someone's going to walk by this and think Bigfoot did it. It's, I don't remember the quote, I mean, or who said it. It's kind of along those lines of, um, I think it was like Occam's Razor, right? Uh, the most simple explanation usually is, is the one. And for me to say, well... The simple explanation is, is Bigfoot did it. I guess that, I guess that's just kind of, people don't understand that, you know, but my eyes see something like that. And I, I, I instantly in my mind go to, 
what what could have broken that tree other than other than human and so i just kind of i see that little little break like that i think to myself huh you know uh did sasquatch walk you know through this path or over this trail and just on his way by just grab it break it uh, maybe for others that may be following him or maybe for on his way back he could say oh this is that little tree break this is where i crossed not to say that a sasquatch would get lost in its own environment but who knows right also really quick something i wanted to talk about very briefly is why why my videos the video doesn't take up the whole screen it's got the borders on the side it's because of the app i use to edit these videos it's called InShot, and it's really simple for a guy like me that is not very computer savvy or just, you know, I hate editing. It's cool. There's some neat stuff that you can do with it, but that is the reason why the format doesn't fit the screen on your TV is because of the app I'm using, the InShot app. from here that looks really fresh let's uh let's get in a little closer on that i would love to do this trail if the 47 miles i would love to do the whole thing you know take you know three days i'd like to get in there hold on let me let me get over this rock this rock wall here. That's that. that looked a lot fresher from the trail. Now that I'm getting closer up to it, it does appear. It's still got some yellow to it, but maybe last year or something. Small break, it's only four and a half feet up, five feet. So, PayPal has decided to suspend my account with them because I didn't I didn't use it enough. Um, I had money in it, and it was I took some money out to get my boots, took some money out for gas, a couple other items, <clears throat> but I didn't empty out the whole PayPal um, account. People were contributing to my channel, and. I had somebody message me, say, Dave, I tried to contribute to your channel and PayPal won't let me. I said, that's odd. So I went on to my account, into the app and opened up my account. It says, oh, your, your PayPal account has been inactive and we need information from you. They want me to send them a picture of myself take a picture of a piece of mail to verify my address and there was another thing a third thing that they wanted me to do I'm like you're joking me like I got the time that I'm gonna do, do that so I figured you know what I'll take the picture I'll send a picture nice and easy with the camera right snapped a nice little selfie I still couldn't send it I don't know what I'm doing I have no idea thank you everybody who contributed to my channel through PayPal appreciate it i still have hundreds of dollars sitting in it it's just sitting there when i can't access it so when i get when i get or figure out how to free up that account and unsuspend it or whatever um i'll let you know i'm sorry for you guys out there i had a couple of messages in my me on my email inbox my gmail account saying dave we tried and we couldn't, we couldn't donate, contribute. I said, uh, let me check it out. Talk to a couple of other uh, people that I'm in contact through my YouTube channel. And they said, uh, yeah, they had a problem with it as well. They don't know what it is. When I looked into it, there you have it. So don't send me any, or don't try to send any contrib uh, contributions to my PayPal. Because they put a freeze on it because I wasn't using it, apparently. Look at this break right here. It's almost seven feet in the air. Uh, 
Huh. Right off the trail. Maybe Bigfoot likes these likes the uh, Sunapee area, huh? Likes the Monadnock region. Also, there's a uh, I don't, I'm not going to mention his name yet. It's someone that's helping me with my channel and some of my research. Really great guy. I'd like to run it by him first <clears throat> before I mention his his uh, his name. But he wanted me to give him some info. I want some freedom of information stuff looked into so I can get some records of sightings, possible possible sightings in the Monadnock area of New Hampshire, which I'm based right in that area. And he said, sure, send me where you want these certain areas. I sent him the information. This, this gentleman's going to help me out and do it. I don't have the time to do it, to be requesting any freedom of information stuff. But he's going to do that for me. That's something that I'm trying to fall in line with Christopher Noel um, from Impossible Visits to let's, uh, let's, let's start asking more questions from, uh, for instance, with the Freedom of Information Act and sightings in my area. Uh, there's something strange up here. Let me just turn the camera so you can see it as well. It actually looked a little more promising from a distance. Hmm. Interesting regardless. Yeah, so like I was saying, this, uh, this, um, this gentleman is gonna, is gonna start to help me with the computer stuff that I either don't have the capability or really it comes down to time. Um, you know, I'm back to work and it's, it's ridiculous hours. And you know what? I'm going to shut up about work because nobody really gives a crap. Um, the only one is me that cares. I notice on some of these videos, on any video really, as soon as the person starts talking about his personal situation and, oh, I had, a, I was sick the other day and I don't care. <laughs> I really don't give a crap. And I think that most people are the same. I don't mean that in a cold way uh, at all. I just mean, you know, people will come on a channel. If I go on a Holly Davidson chopper build channel, you know, and I want to check out this guy building his own chopper, I don't want to hear about what he's got going on other than that motorcycle. Same thing with Bigfoot. People come on and watch these videos, any videos, because they want to see and talk about Sasquatch. Not about that I was sick last week. Or I'm really tired because I'm working a lot of hours. Although the travel is killing me. Anyways, I'm not going to go much further up this trail. Um, I think I'm probably a mile and a half up. Look at this. That tree break is way up in the air. All right, this is interesting. Now I've seen this break. And I look over to my left here. And look at this tree bend. It comes up and around, and get stuffed right in between these two trees. Look at that. That is your classic, in, in, in my opinion, uh, classic Bigfoot behavior to do something like that. It's all looped right up, all the way down, and kind of wedged a little bit in between these two trees. Big, big, huge arch. And directly across the trail, if you get this tree break, that tree break is 12 feet in the air. Holy jabroni. That is up there. That's, let's see. I'm going to guess 10 feet up. Got to be 10 feet, almost 11 feet up that break. This is a promising area that I have found or discovered or it's new to me, right? Talking with uh, Big Brother Bob recently. Um, 
he's been getting himself geared up. Uh, he had a problem with his leg. His leg is getting much better. He wants to come out with me and watch my back while I hike. I've never really had a hiking partner. I, I'm just hearing something right in that area. Um, and I'm really looking forward to you guys meeting Big Brother Bob. So um, he's, he's kind of getting really close to where he's going to be able to start getting out into the woods with me. And it's going to be a really nice feeling to have him watch my back while I'm out here because because I get really sidetracked looking at these tree breaks and whatnots, um, just this and that, that I really am not paying attention. Uh, I could have a mountain lion stalking me some of these times and I'm just not paying attention. I'm, I'm looking to the left, to the right, I'm looking at this tree break and these subtle little, little breaks and snaps. Like there's a, there's a for instance right there. And so I'm not paying attention to what's around me and that's not good, especially you know, in, in southeastern Massachusetts, I didn't find it a big deal at all. Just because there's no predators, maybe a pack of coyote, that's it. Uh, your occasional black bear might wander into southeastern Mass. It's, it's, they've been spotted. It, it has happened. But up here in the mountains, it's a whole different animal. That There, there are two predators up here that could potentially do me harm physical harm could kill me and that's a mountain lion and don't you dare anybody try to tell me there's no mountain lion in new hampshire i've seen fresh tracks firsthand big mountain lion tracks with a small cub and bear now i do understand that, that the black bear up here what is going on i don't know maybe no you, you can't hear it I hear the littlest, littlest tiny twig breaks, like little, little, like this, just these little, little snaps, like that. Anywho, uh, it'll be great to have big, uh, to have big brother Bob um, watching my six. He'll be up here carrying his hand cannon. And uh, whatever else he wants to carry, because he can. He can carry any weapon he wants up here. And I will be happy to have him um, team up with his little brother. And uh, he, loves, he loves nature just as much as me. Um, he's warming up to the thought of, of Bigfoot. Although, you know, like, like many people, it's hard, it's hard to wrap your mind around something as large as Bigfoot being able to thrive and never be seen, right? Or I shouldn't say that, they're seen all the time. People see Sasquatch, it seems like on a daily basis, but scientifically, it's, it's not real. So I understand it's difficult for some people. Why am I... My heart's pounding here. My heart's pounding out of my chest. And I'm trying to ignore it. So I have decided to, uh, to turn back. Um, I got, I still probably got an hour and a half of sun, maybe, maybe, maybe two, but this, this was a trek. This trail behind me, it was almost all uphill. I like it. I'm going to come back. I want to go further up this trail. I'm only, I think I might have went two miles. I don't even know if I went two miles. It feels like I went two miles. I can tell you that right now. That little twig breaking, I haven't I haven't heard it now in uh, in a few. But to get that hot pounding, 
I haven't felt that in a little while. And the, you know, it could have been a tiniest little fox, little woodland, little woodland creature. Uh, curious about what, what this big hairy dude is walking around in the woods, uh, talking to a box in his hand. It's so beautiful up here. I, I uh, zero regrets right now so far, moving up north up here. Um, probably the commute is the only regret. <laughs> Not regret, I knew it was coming. But it's probably the only thing that is a uh, setback. There's a huge spider in the trail and I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't know if you guys have hiked and ever had that happen to you when you're walking along <laughs> and you get a, a cobweb or a, or a spider web and it just envelopes your whole head. <laughs> That's really, it's not funny. I'm laughing at it, but it ain't funny. There's that big tree break again. <sighs> That's up there, that's 10, 11 feet. All right, guys. This video has just gone on way too far. I had, I had stuff to say, what do you want? What do you want from me, right? What do I know from nothing? So, it's the, the hike down, primo. I'm cooling down, my sweat's cooling down a little bit. The hike up, man. I got to get out more. Um, getting back to work was is good too. It get me in shape. I've already dropped a few pounds, and getting out here and sweating and hiking and doing what I absolutely love. Um, really, the brass tacks of it, if you want to say that, or the bare bones of it is hiking. It's all it's all about hiking. I love the woods. I love the forest, and I kind of stumbled stumbled into the Bigfoot thing and. Uh, I'm, I'm focused in on that, I'm, and I, I like it so much, and I really, if I could reach some people that are kind of on the fence about Sasquatch, I'm telling you right now, if you're one of those people you're not quite sure, you think it's ridiculous, come out with Hiker Dave. I'll show you stuff that, that will make you say, hmm, I wonder. At least make you wonder, right? If you have an open mind, keep an open mind about about the possibility of Bigfoot, and you go out into the woods, look look for some sign on your own. Um, you know, preferably go with somebody else, but um, get out there and look, and you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked, especially if you have one of those sitting at home right now on your couch, and you're going, man, I would love to get out there and do that, but you know, there's no way that there's Bigfoot around here. You may be pleasantly surprised to find out that Sasquatch is right on the fringes of our own society and they love to watch us. They are interested in, I believe, us to be, be their entertainment. I think they love watching us. We are their version of Netflix. They know anytime they want, all they got to do is go to a, a populated area uh, right on the outskirts. Oh, yeah, I walked right into that one. Oh, boy. Go right to the outskirts of a park um, or even hiking trails like this, plop down on a log, and you're bound to see some humans walking by. And maybe like what happened to me in Massasoit a year or two ago, you can have a pine cone thrown at you. Um, or on a, on, a, on a scarier thought, the time um, I was in uh, the swamp, that's uh, Hockamock Swamp, when I was herded out. Um, I heard jabber, jibbering, jibbering right around the trail. Every, every corner I took the trail, nothing there, but the jabbering was still there. Uh, that was a, alone out there. And I would have sworn there was a group of three people talking, really low, low talking. And I had something thrown at me on the way out there as well. That was a little bit more of a scarier experience. My Garmin navigation system gave out. I had fully put brand new batteries in it the night before or, you know, days before I went on that hike. And halfway into my hike, my entire Garmin system shut down, just like the batteries were dead. Get back out to the road, my Garmin turns right back on again. Really weird stuff. I'm not saying Sasquatch has anything to do with that. I'm just saying. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way out of here, guys, and um, I'll sum it up. Tell you what I think about my hike for today. Well, that was a lot of fun. I really, really liked that trail. 47 miles. That's a hike. That's a long trail. Someday, maybe, but uh, I, I, but I did see some sign there. I will say that the difference, the big difference from hiking here compared to southeastern Massachusetts is by far the terrain. The terrain is a lot more challenging, a lot more challenging than it was in southeastern Mass. But I think that the opportunity for me to learn more about their travel habits, about Sasquatch and how they travel, where, what they leave behind, and I, you know that's that's good for me, you know, and I and it's important for me to bring you guys along because without bringing you guys along, I'm not sharing it. I want to share it. I think it's fun. I'm having a blast here. I do appreciate you guys clicking, and I'll definitely definitely see you guys on the next one.